Bozo. I hope you are ready for bed. Because... Just uh, got a few things I wanted to say, and I thought maybe you might like to listen to me while you fall asleep. So, I've got a blanket here, and I am just going to ever so gently. gonna gently tuck you in there. Just tuck you in. So I hope you're nice and comfy. And of course, please tuck yourself into bed. I can't do it for you, unfortunately. But yeah, sit back. with sort of different objects. I have a fluffy earpick there and then I've got a brush, a little paintbrush that I thought you might like if I just delicately brushed around the outside of your face as well as the fluffy little pop filter I have which might be to just gently brush around. So, sit back or lay down, get comfy and cozy, and I'll, uh, I'll just uh, tell you some things that I've sort of had on my mind. kind of uh, lately wanted to get back into reading again. I miss having like a little series that when I was done with one book, I could just pick up the next one and go from there. And uh, back in the day, or well, back in the day I say, a couple of years ago now, uh, I was really into the Game of Thrones TV show. Me and my brother would watch it sort of every day, every day, every week uh, when a new episode would come out. And I got really into that uh, for a couple of years whilst it was airing. But I never read the books for it. And at the time, my reasoning was, well, they're not finished yet, and I'm already watching the show. So it might be better if I just wait for the show to finish, because it should cover everything, even past where the books are. And we, uh, we all know today, for those of you who have seen that series, we all know it ended terribly. So that was a bad choice. But I've been thinking lately, I was watching a lot of... I was watching, like, a lot of... Uh, like, Game of Thrones theory videos on YouTube. Fascinating to me. It was really fascinating to me to watch those. And they 
and because I'm uh, looking for a series to read, I was thinking about picking this up. My only issue is it's been now like 13 years since the last one. Dance with Dragons, I think it was the last one. Um, but yeah, a wind, a, The Winds of Winter is the next book to come out, and it's been in development or in writing for years and years and years. So I didn't want to pick up a new book series. still isn't finished, and may not ever be finished, because if The Winds of Winter has taken 13 years to still not even be released, what's the last book I believe is called A Dream of Spring, if I'm recalling correctly. So if it took 13 years for the winds of winter to come out, and it's still not even out, how many more years am I going to have to wait for the last book in the series to come out? So I can't decide whether I start reading that and then just hope, hope and pray that uh, George R. R. Martin finally finishes the books by the time that I get done with them. just um, pick a different series. I know, I believe last time, last time I was talking to you, I was talking about potentially reading the Lord of the Rings books. Uh, that never came through. I, um, It's still sitting behind me. There it is. It's still sitting behind me. I did try reading that, but it's so like kid friendly. I didn't realize. I knew it was a children's book, but it just makes it reading it now seem just a little odd because it's definitely written for kids, even though some sort of intense stuff happens in that book, but it's definitely a fun children's book. And so, then reading The Lord of the Rings became more appealing to me. And I've actually, I've seen the movies oh, a long time ago now. I watched the movies a long time ago, uh, probably back in like 2000 and 13 or 14 was the first time I ever watched those films. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm very sorry if you like them. I did not like them. I was not a fan of what I was watching. I think it was because, like, I watched them over, like, three weeks. I watched one movie each weekend. So I'm just going to swap. I watched them over like three weekends, and they're like three hours long each. And so, I, like, whilst I knew, like, I remembered what had happened, I was kind of just disinterested because I couldn't just like, like, I kept having to take breaks because like the movie is three hours long, so it's like I would need to go to the toilet or like I would get a drink or something. So, like, I couldn't just sit there and just watch the film. And then, like, then I would be waiting a week, and, like, a week while I was here in, uh, whilst I was in high school was a long time to wait to watch the next film in the series. Uh, and just also not really caring about what was going on. I, I was watching it because all my, all my friends were talking. 
I'm finally going to watch these films, but I watched them more out of obligation than like I wanted to watch them. It's the same reason why, like, uh, Interstellar. Watching it because I was kind of forced to watch it. That movie is really good, but it has like a sour taste in my mouth because when I was watching it, I, I didn't actually want to be watching it. So, anytime someone brings up Interstellar, I'm always like, ah, oh, it's a good film, but oh, I just did, I didn't want to watch it in the situation that I watched it in. So it was sort of similar with the Lord of the Rings. It was like I wasn't forced to, but it, it did feel like that. So I have that sort of hang up. That hang up with those films. Which makes me a little hesitant to read the books. Because I don't know if it's going to follow through. Everything I hear, everything I hear about the Lord of the Rings books is the way they're written is like very, I don't know if monotonous is the word to use, but there's like descriptions. that's the way that Tolkien writes it was like that and whilst I've read some very uh, boring books before I don't know if I would be able to get through three of them if I didn't like the way it was written because I read um favorite books, I've, I've said this before, one of my favorite books is 1984 by George Orwell, it's a fantastic book, uh, I love that book a lot, and it's written, in, like I will admit that book is written we really weirdly, there's like a whole section of that book where the character is reading a book in the book, and it's just like describing the, the ideologies and theories of this, this like, thing. Uh, but however, I like that. But what I didn't like was Fahrenheit 451. I read that book because people told me it was similar. It was similar to... It is like there's similar themes about like suppression of of thoughts and like ideologies and stuff like that. There's very similar themes of like war and like government control and stuff like that. But Fahrenheit 451 was written in a way that's just like it was just sluggish to get through. There's like a little bit of fluff. I don't know if you can see that. So my thumb. There's a little bit of fluff flying around. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Something about... Fahrenheit 451 being hard to read and it just made it sluggish to get through which is what I'm worried will happen with the Lord of the Rings which is why I haven't read them which is why I was thinking about reading uh, A Song of Ice and Fire uh, 
which isn't finished, which is why I didn't want to read it. So I keep having these, like, little dilemmas in my brain about what I want to write next. Which is really annoying, because then I end up not reading anything. And, uh, then I just uh, get bored uh, trying to find new things to read. It's a, uh, a game that I really miss playing is Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 3. I really enjoyed that game as a kid. I feel like there's quite a few games. The, uh, the PlayStation 2 was, was probably the console. Series of games that I like remember fondly from. So I like I grew up with a Super Nintendo. That was the first console that we had in our house when I was growing up. And uh, then on my uh, older brother's birthday, he got a PlayStation Two.
I bought a PS4 like years after it came out. I bought it. I bought it. To go back to what I was saying, I bought it because Kingdom Hearts 3. After years and years and years and years and years and years and years of waiting, it finally came out. And it was bad. It was bad. It was not good. Kingdom Hearts 3 is not a good game. of a fan of all the other like side stories and spin-offs and all of those like Chain of Memories and Birth by Sleep Dream Drop Distance I never actually played that one uh, whatever the Roxas one is with like 325 days or 7 whatever I don't remember the name of that game I was always wanting some time to sorry I'm just getting comfortable here I hope you don't mind uh, yeah if ever I wanted something to like comfort me while I was uh, like sick or just like not having a good day I got a PS4 So, even though that has all my other games on it, I will literally just play Kingdom Hearts 1 over and over and over and over again. And then once I'm done with that, I, uh, I move on and play Kingdom Hearts 2. Excuse me. It's, uh, man, it's so, it's so much fun. Just like the running, I don't, okay, sure, I should explain. basically Final Fantasy meets Disney is like the pitch so imagine Square Enix uh, sorry no yeah it is Square Enix it used to be Square Soft uh, imagine Square Enix characters in Disney Princess Worlds so it mixes my favourite video games which is the Final Fantasy specifically 7, 8 and 9 with my favourite movies to watch growing up which was the Disney movies and you just get to like travel around the different worlds looking for your friends fighting Heartless and a really special place in my heart and so whenever I'm feeling like a little upset I'll uh, boot up a new game and uh, recently I actually not really recently it was, it was like probably a year ago now I played Kingdom Hearts 1 again chest, I got every, like, hidden, uh, like, they call it Trinity, 
animation. I, I beat every boss. I did everything. I, I did absolutely everything that you could, except for getting all the synthesis items. Uh -huh. And I did that all on the hardest difficulty as well, which is why I'm a little, you know, I, I, I like that I did this, but it, it makes me sound like such a big nerd, because I think a game where you're running around Disney worlds and then you're like fighting little like like little black ant things collecting items and having Donald and Goofy help you along the way and you go to places like you go to like Tarzan and, and uh, Alice in Wonderland the Nightmare Before Christmas which is probably like one of my favorite worlds there's a uh, Atlantis from The Little Mermaid. Uh, where else would you go? One, one of the main places. Hercules, you know, the, uh, the Olympus Coliseum. There's just, uh, yeah, all kinds of fun to be had. So, I, think, I mean, as a kid, I spent hours of time. Just running around, having fun, and to know now that as like an adult that I've I've done everything you can do in that game, that's worth doing. That's worth doing. Everything you think you can do in that game is worth doing. Yeah, it just uh, it gives me like a sense of like accomplishment, I guess. And yeah, anytime I. Part of me misses and had like an original experience like the run on PS2 is different to the re-releases that we have. The re-releases have like different skins for like certain enemies and stuff like that. It's called like final, the final mix which was a Japanese release. And Clank, Ratchet and Clank 2, uh, Locked and Loaded, and then Ratchet and Clank 3, uh, Up Your Arsenal. Although I think, uh, I think the game, I think 2, Locked and Loaded, is called like Going Commando or something in America. It has like a different name, whereas here it's called Locked and Loaded. And then also there was the fourth one. I played Gladiator quite a bit as well, but I wasn't like as much of a fan of it because you didn't have Clank. It wasn't Ratchet and Clank. It was Ratchet and Gladiator, even though like technically it was the fourth game. It wasn't the fourth Ratchet and Clank game. It was the first Ratchet game. But I put so much time into those into the Ratchet and Clank games. We actually had a um. I remember, if you, do you remember the days of like demo discs? If you know what demo discs are. Like thing, and they were more so like a PlayStation One era thing, but the PS Two still had you could get like demo discs from places. And uh, yeah, we had this one demo disc that that had uh, two levels from the the first Ratchet and Clank game. It had uh, Metropolis, I think that's what's called Metropolis, and Blackwater Sea, Blackwater, whatever it is, and. I just remember every weekend, every weekend when I was in like primary school, I would come home from school and like wake up super early the next day, boot up a PlayStation 2, put in the demo disc and just on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, play the same two levels in Ratchet and Clank over and over and over and over and over again and just like explore the, the, the planets and like look at every little like nook and cranny that I could find because it was just so much got to the point that I was playing that level so much that uh, my, my parents actually got us the game. Like, finally, we, I could have the full game. I, I remember, like, 
like the amount of joy I had when, when that happened as well. I was like, oh my god, I love this game. I love the two levels. And finally, I get to like play the whole thing. And the game was also like, it was so much different to the demo disc. Because obviously it's like a test. such, uh, it was like an old test version of the game or something like that, and obviously like before they had fully released it, so the worlds weren't, like everything that you could do in the game wasn't actually in those worlds, so I remember playing actual Ratchet and Clank for the first time, and just like the, the, the level of details, just being so excited, and like discovering new things about these was just so, like, just a wonderful feeling. Yeah, and so then, obviously once I'd beaten Ratchet and Clank 1, because it was 2 and 3, and whilst I consider Ratchet and Clank 1 probably my favourite of the games, I think Ratchet and Clank 3 is probably so much more in that game you could do and there was like way more like interactivity and like hidden stuff and like places to explore and the story was just like cool to me as well oh and I remember discovering in 3 that there was like a specific time and a specific place you could go and you could go to like the demo not the demo the like There was like a broken teleporter and you could go there on a specific date and it would activate like if your internal clock of the PS2 was set to that date and time it would activate and send you to this uh, like museum uh, and you would be able to like walk around and look at all of this test stuff and ah oh, it was just I, I really wish more games had some cool stuff like that and just like a little behind the scenes very soon.